So I want to share with you a Torah thought. Um, I thought I was just recording it, so I like already spoke for like ten minutes, so now I have to like make it shorter. Um, it says many times in the Torah and about, about with Avraham Avinu and other places that we're like uh, beyond, you know, we're like this. We can't be counted like the stars in the in the sky and like the sand in the sea, and and then. God takes us out into the desert, right? Which is like endless sand and endless sky. So like, what's up with that? And um, with, you know, and this, the desert has no borders and anybody can come in, but it's very hard to get out. So it's kind of like Hotel California. So if you know the song, it's probably stuck in your head. If you don't know the song, you can always Google it and then it'll get stuck in your head. But um, the kids are, we live in an age where they say there's like 3 billion people connected to the internet which is just astronomical, 3 billion people. Okay, it's like we can't even count, we can't even imagine seven objects or more than eight objects in our brain. So uh, seven billion, 3 billion people online is just crazy. And the more connected we are to this, the more we feel alone. You know, we're waiting for that, that, that retweet, we're waiting for that uh, acknowledgement of that I'm here, that I'm actually here. And yet we're just like pissing into the wind, right? So like, uh, unless you get like, a few 10,000 followers or a million followers or 20 something million followers and you're like a nobody, like nobody even cares about you. So God says, no, 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 no. See, there's the stars, there's the sand. Yeah, that's endless. That's that's the big data. That's big, big, big forests. And I'm not, I'm not going to let you get lost in that. I'm going to pick you up outside of that. I'm going to take you beyond that. And I'm going to, you know, they say that I heard a Chabad rabbi say that Avram Vina was like an astronaut, right? So it's a cute, cute uh, metaphor. And um, all the astronauts that went into space came back really religious, actually. It's, we could read about that. Um, so, you know, when we're confronted with massive information, we're always looking for, like, the tangibles, the takeaways. Like, like okay, so what, tachlis, like, so you're going to tell me there's, I don't know, 3 billion people online? But, like, what's, so, so what, like? How am I going to get their attention? How am I going to, am I going to make a website that's actually going to, you know, attract them? And like, what's so, like, there's 3 billion people, like, like, what, I'll get five visitors, you know what I mean? Like, what's the point of that? Like, what am I going to do? What's the takeaway with that? Uh, you know, uh, so what, I can call China and talk to some Chinese guy. Like, so what? So uh, we're always looking for, like, the takeaway. We're always looking for, like, what's in it for me? And that's where the mitzvah come in. Like, God says, okay, you know. The universe is like massive. The stars, you can't count them, and that's what you guys are like. You, I'm not gonna be. You're not gonna be able to be counted in your accomplishments. And the mitzvot are so grand, and so connected to my, to me, Hashem, the the ultimate source of of the universe of infinity. That like by connecting to the mitzvot, you are like extracting that data. Like you're you're like taking the 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 the, the most relevant things and you're doing them and you're connecting to them and by doing these things you're uh, connected to me and you're not lost in the forest and you're not lost in the beach or the desert anymore um, so the mitzvot and the tefillah and the oral tradition and the talmud and all these things that we have in our beautiful religion all are to like give us things to grasp onto because otherwise we're like lost you know and it's you know if you just start thinking about those, those 3 billion people, like it could get really scary and you start getting depressed. And they've actually said that it's uh, now in our day and age, more people are feeling lonelier than ever. So maybe that's what it was with Avram Avino. Maybe he was super lonely. Like, you know, he was like, it was all by himself. Like he was the only one in the world that believed in that, that there was one God, like his whole entire society. And he was all by himself. And he must have really been depressed about that. Like he must have been like crying, and, you know, and it wasn't until he was like 75 years old that God even spoke to him and said, no, 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 don't, don't worry about the rest of society. Don't worry about all those idol worships, including your own father, including your own father. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you the truth. And he, he's like, okay, but you have to leave. You have to lechacha. You have to leave. You, you can't stay. You can't stay in this mess of materialism and idol worship because you won't, you, you, because all these idols are just objects. Like it's, all, again, it's like the forest. It's like the data, the data. All you see in front of you is, is numbers, numbers, numbers. It blurs. He starts getting blurry and he couldn't. And so in order to see God, he had to like leave that. He had to like really go and go to this crazy place called Canaan where there was already seven nations, you know, hanging out here. It wasn't like he took them to like empty space, you know what I mean? Empty, empty land. 
so then he had to deal, like Avram Avinu had to deal with like the real world, like he had to deal with famine, he had to deal with uh, his wife not having a baby, he had to deal with getting, you know, like all kinds of things. He had really he had real challenges, to ten different challenges according to our tradition. And um, just like there's ten utterances, right, that made up the world, and there's uh, there's ten levels of the um, the the. Um, the Kabbalah. So all these things are 10, right? So 10 is like a big number in Judaism. But anyways, I'm getting up to five and a half minutes, uh, five, six minutes. Uh, don't get lost in the data and uh, don't, don't you know, I'm feeling that loneliness, which I've been really experiencing. And it's very real. It's very, very real. It's scary. It's like you just see all these people around you, see these buses and the rain and the, the clouds and you're like, you feel like well, God doesn't care about me, and I like today. Actually, today, like, uh, like such a, I actually got a bird pooped on me today. Like my day was really bad today. I had a really bad day. I had like like one of those Linus's days, like Linus from Peanuts. Like he's this character where the rain clouds are always following him around. So today, like, I'm literally, not only was it raining, but my day was extremely hard. It's, it's, I don't want. I guess I'll go into it in another video, but I mean, I was crying a lot today. I, I had to deal with the tax authority. I had to deal with fixing a tax return that I turned in, like so I gave some information incorrectly, so I had to run around there, and then, then I had to go to a job interview, and it, like I haven't worked, you know, and like it's really looking overwhelming, but I'm, but, but Piton, like somewhere, knock, 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 like Hashem like sends a little bird to like, shish, to literally poop on me, and uh, to like wake me up out of this like stupor that I was in, you know, this really depressed state, because when you're depressed, and you're angry. It's it's mamish what idol worship is, and what are the idols? Idols are the materialism. When when you can't when it's when you can't see Hashem because you're so lost in all the data, so Hashem sends you that mitzvah. You know, He sends you like a He sends you a homeless person to give tzedakah to. He says, so, sends you a little mezuzah to kiss. You know, here in Israel they're like everywhere, right? Or He sends somebody to say Bruch Hashem, or the radio is playing, or the radio will be playing some rabbi talking. You know. It's like, or some really beautiful song when playing on the radio, or like some real Sanua woman, or non Sanua woman, you know, like, he'll, God will send you something to like, to like, oh, you know, like, so today, like, God sent me a little bird poop, you know, like, what, what can I else, God, there's no other, I mean, no other explanation, I mean, not random. We don't believe, I don't believe in randomness, I don't believe in this, we have, even though we have a garal system, we have this idea of a lottery, it's within the context of, of Hashem's world. So it's like, it's not really a real lottery. Yeah, but that's, a, that's another one of my theories. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'll wrap it up and just say, uh, I have a lot to say. I wanted to talk about something completely different. And I, I guess I'm just not ready to talk about it. And you, you guys probably aren't ready to listen to it. So uh, we'll shake hands and uh, say goodnight.